same old trouble Villains always knocking at the door Pretty pictures on the page But nothing ever stays the same Thank you, Vandello, and welcome everyone to Graphically Novel. My name is Josh Wasta, a.k.a. Fallout Fury. And with me, as always, is my white dragon... Oh, uh, I get to be the races. The monster that skips the intro to this show. <laughs> it's fair. Only every time after the second. Because <laughs> I had to watch it again just to, just to go, wait a minute, did I just see what I thought I saw? <laughs> uh, and with us as usual, the lovely and talented are hardcore. <laughs> it is Ms. What the Jennifer fuck does Howard. that mean? <laughs> exactly. Your tits Thank look you. really nice in that shirt. That's a compliment. It's not sexist. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> and it's my pleasure, as usual, to uh, introduce our guest, returning guest, David Harnois. Thank you it for me. joining us. It's you. One of our uh, one of our DC family. Thank uh, you very much of... for having me back. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so we will uh, we'll be talking Peacemaker today. The surprise out of fucking nowhere show from James Gunn. Um, and we'll be talking about his uh, four part miniseries from 1988. Um, we'll see which one we talk more about. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's let's start uh, let's let's start with the with the comic. Uh, Jen, what did you think about this comic? Uh, <laughs> um. Well, <clears throat> excuse me while I retch. It was bad. Uh, yeah. You know, you know how you watch the show and you're like, if this thing took itself any more seriously, it would be unwatchable. And you're just glad that it's funny and it doesn't take itself seriously. Then you read the comic and you're like, oh my god, they took themselves seriously. I kept waiting for something to be funny. I kept waiting for something to be like, oh yeah, no, that's cool. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill for peace. I'm gonna Oh god, no, they're serious. Oh, yeah. oh Ooh, good lord. They had their head so far up their ass. So uh this is a this is a recurring problem we've run into on this show, and that is um comic books do not age no um so david uh was this the first time that you've read peacemaker yeah and uh and how'd you feel uh it it was a comic book that existed <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah we i mean it's wow. it's interesting going through it because you you can definitely see what they took into the tv show i mean he is he has daddy issues, you know, having a crazy white supremacist father. Um, but the the comic is it's melodramatic to the point of I, I hope parody, because um, it it if somebody was reading this, like if somebody was actually like staging this or like performing this comic, it, it, I don't know how you could watch it and not just laugh at the sheer ridiculousness of it um, it's true it's although it was, that is a good point and and going through it like it was interesting because there's a moment which i feel like ultimate like it was weird two things that i noticed going through it were a moment that i feel like got paid looking at it now seems like a weird homage later but it was peacemaker uh breaking um oh god i can't even remember his name i was trying to so many people to keep track of but the the big henchman's back over his knee oh yeah uh, yeah i was like it, oh that's familiar i was about uh, to say was that before nightfall uh nightfall i think was in the 90s if so I 88 correctly. yeah yeah this would have been before that yeah um and then uh <laughs> the code word being excelsior gave me a giggle <laughs> yes yeah well that was that was the ever as we've seen the the ever uh present round of digs that dc and marvel did especially in the 80s and 90s yeah um there was a lot of that um i think the last time we saw it was in young justice um I'm trying to remember who they actually were making fun of but um yeah i've also run into it and a bunch of other things but my favorite is uh is mr miracle 
um, that I read for Rec Conversations, and there's a character that is Stanley, like mm-hmm. in every way, <laughs> shape, or form. In form, it's supposed to be Stanley, and you can tell it's Stanley. And but he will basically walk into a panel and be like, "Hey, everybody, I love it. It's fantastic. Everybody loves me, Excelsior!" <laughs> and then like dances out. Of the- <laughs> um, also, uh, I did look it up. Nightfall was ninety three to ninety four. Okay, so. so. Yeah, this was uh, before the, the breaking of the bat. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh... Well, you know, I'd like to also point out that I, something I didn't think of until David said melodramatic. It remind like, as soon as he said it, I'm like, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of, and I'm, was it Barbara Worth? No, Mary Worth, Mary Worth. It was a comic strip in newspapers but it was a drama comic strip. Oh my God. It was one of the, yeah, it was on the unfunny bottom of the page. Yeah. It was like next to family circus <laughs> yeah. and other right. shit that was uh-huh. just not funny. Yeah. And and that's exactly what this comic reminded me. Yeah. It was like too much words, not doing anything. Oh, this was yeah. definitely an eighties comic. I was just yeah. like, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm asleep. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm asleep. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is definitely before the era of show don't tell. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, which which we had a, a CR episode on Dark Phoenix. Um, <laughs> you want to see me rant again. <laughs> yeah. Uh because yeah, this era was just a lot a lot of talking. Like there did not need to be as many like conversations as there were because like the entire time it's them talking about the same things. Like this could have been one issue of a I, comic book i was waiting for him to have mm-hmm. sex with his therapist yeah and, yeah. yeah again did not like, happen do you mean the french maid with the german accent yes <laughs> the french maid with the german accent that was actually the undercover psychiatrist right there and to his keep girlfriend him... his french girlfriend knew she was a psychiatrist right <laughs> it's sort of like a soap opera but yes. with a lot more death yes. yeah well then it was a telenovela yeah yeah uh, <laughs> well yeah exactly with masks Yes. There's also <laughs> Dr. Zinzin, Zin, who yeah. is seem one obviously does not age well, but also seems like a Mandarin parody. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, which the Mandarin parody in and of itself was a Fu Manchu parody. Yeah. So um layers yeah. upon layers. And the other part that I'll warn anyone that wants to pick up these books is um Peacemaker's father in this, and and I'm 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 gonna lift the spoiler ban on this. First of all, it's 1988 miniseries. Oh man, it's and only, we gotta talk about it. It's only four four issues. Mm-hmm. Um, Peacemaker sees his Nazi father, who his father was a Nazi, mm-hmm. and killed himself in front of Peacemaker, and Peacemaker talks to him constantly Wait, and sees him. He killed himself in front of Peacemaker, but before he did it. He told him that it was Peacemaker's fault that right. he was killing himself. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so if you want to talk about, there's a lot of, you're going to deal with a lot of childhood trauma. Yeah. Well, this. you're you're also going to deal with a lot of racist words. Like, mm-hmm. they touched on it. There's one, I noticed there's one scene in Peacemaker when you first meet his father where he talks about go out and kill uh, blacks and then he uses like a bunch of slurs and he just runs down the racial right. the line of yeah. Like yeah. racial slurs right it's worse mm. in this comic book <laughs> uh yeah um still amused that after using all those other racial slurs they didn't drop an n-bomb no he specifically, he specifically says the blacks yeah, he says blacks he never drops an n-bomb he just goes but then after that it's every other racial slur you can think of right yeah yeah and uh but yeah, that uh, that character. Well, and the other thing is, you're always waiting for Peacemaker to like to completely lose it because everyone in the comic keeps saying he's gonna completely lose it. Yeah, yeah. And then he never does. He kind of <laughs> loses it in issue four. He, he does kind of lose it in, in issue four. Yeah, he does have. I think he had like a break uh, at listen, that point. He is talking to his dead father out loud. Yeah, he yeah. has already lost it. Yeah, yeah. No, he also he would a... jump out of a plane yeah. and and say, Dad, take the controls. Right. Uh... <laughs> At first I was trying to figure out if he like modeled his Jarvis AI for the plane. Well, yeah, but he after didn't do that. Dad... He didn't do that. He has like a whole t- he has a team. Yeah. 
Yeah. He has a team of people. He has a mechanic who is probably the Stark equivalent and, you know, whatever. But yeah. yeah. Oh, and by the way, the guy whose back he breaks, his name is Micah. Micah. How did we forget that? Break your fucking back, Micah. I, listen, I slept through <laughs> ha- literally half of this four issue series. I, I kept nodding off, and it's like I was even finishing it up on the ride back from working on Alex's Eagle Scout project today. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I'd be reading it, reading it, reading. And I'd get through like a page and I'd nod off and I'd be like, oh, okay, got to keep, got to finish this up. I don't remember most of it. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I put it down, I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll worry about it later. I'll fake it through the last like five pages. It won't be that big a deal. And then I was wide awake for the rest of the ride home. Also, this is uh so this is an eighties comic, um, late eighties, um, a, a time where comic books were still, primarily for kids um or at least the the way that they they put it out kids young adults we we're just on the cusp of sandman beginning and a bunch of other comic books that kind of brought it more um into the into the realm of adult but who was this comic book for who who... remember please see they had their head so far up their ass (laughs) yeah i I think it was for themselves it felt very masturbatory it was not, it was not good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but that was one of the thoughts that I had is who was this intended for? Because it was too melodramatic E for a lot of adults, but it was too I don't... racist and violent for a lot of kids. Yeah. I, I feel like this, looking at that, I would have to assume that the intention was for adults given the subject matter. Right. But it was it it was just a failed execution yeah but i mean you look at this and i mean there was they were saying you know when they were talking about cena playing peacemaker and everything they talk about it being a douchey captain america and i think that's pretty spot on yeah i mean yes uh well let's let's transition over over to the show um first of all bear you i'm sure have you you've been saying you have a lot to say about that opening about that opening number I, I I felt traumatized. Traumatized. And I, I did actually watch it more than twice. Like, I, I watched it at first, and I'm just like, what in the... Like, this isn't even good choreography. Like, what are they... I don't understand. And I just... Yeah, uh, like, somebody attacked my eyeballs with a television. Um, but honestly, like, especially the second time through watching the series, I, I watched that intro pretty much every time. And if you really start to get, like your your opinion of that intro will change if you watch it with every episode as you watch the episodes. Agreed. Because mm-hmm. by the time at the end of it, I'm like, this is a really catchy tune, and except for that eagle at the end, I'm just like, it's a little, it's a little cringy, but all things considered, like it's kind of cool. So um, I, I tracked down because I had seen the Facebook like rumor, and so I tracked it down, and it's actually true. The choreographer for this was Alan Tudyk's wife. Oh, um, really? Yes. And she made the dance specifically for non-dancers. Because they, they, James Gunn had talked to her about it and said, this is kind of what I wanted. To. And so she, when she gets home, um, will ask Alan Tudyk to do things since he's not a dancer because she wanted to that see makes so much more sense. Yes, yeah. because she wanted to see how a non-dancer, if if Moves. it tracked in her mind right. the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he knew the dance so well that the first day that they were rehearsing it, John Cena couldn't make it. He filled in for John Cena, and there is video of it it's of video him evidence. doing just the very beginning of the of the dance. Yeah, uh, I, I need you to send that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I will send you the whole article that talks about so it because it just go up on our, on our Facebook page, right? Um, yeah, just again, just people in Hollywood being <laughs> fucking amazing, right? Um, but yes, I I agree with you. I enjoyed it more and more and more, and I enjoyed it a lot to begin with. Like I did not feel like I was being assaulted. I felt like there was a conversation actually uh, that was happening a couple days ago with Sarah Michaels and. She was talking about themes, uh, TV show themes specifically, and how the intent is to get you ready for what you're about to watch. 
like you know, Cheers gets you in sure. the in the mood for oh, I'm gonna be sitting at a bar. This is like I'm sitting piano at the bar man, where literally where everybody knows my name. Right. Like, uh, this is just like my second home. Right. You know, the X Men theme gets you like pumped up. Like right. you're gonna start to see <laughs> some shit. Yeah. <laughs> This does its job. <laughs> I'm going to sit around and watch a bunch of loons dance around like turkeys. And there's going to be a lot of hair metal. Right? Yes. Yeah, there, um, there are two things that I can never fault James Gunn on, which are his music choices mm-hmm. and his action sequence. Those two things, I, I always enjoy what he does with those. Well, and now his TV series because uh, this is this is his only TV. This is his only experience writing television. Um, he did this because he wrote the Suicide Squad um, with a team pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. Then during COVID, he wrote this. He wrote eight episodes, never having done TV before, and he did it not thinking it would ever get picked up. He did it as just a thought exercise. And then, well, like he made a thing, right? And then the, when they were doing filming the Suicide Squad, he had gone to the the WB execs, and been like, "Oh yeah, I've also got this thing," and they liked it, so we got it. Yep. So uh, the actual show, um, I mean, obviously, I've I've come out and said I fucking love this show. Uh, this was some of the best improvements on a character. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Easily. Yeah. Like compared to pretty much any character that we've like anything we've done. It's like, yeah, here's some character development. Yeah. Um so uh David is more of a of a DC person. How did th- how did this hit you? Um overall, I liked the series quite a bit. Um and especially because Cena Cena gets some really nice moments of character development and acting the the thing with john cena that gets me is i don't always believe him when he's talking Mm -hmm. um just because you're so used to hearing him do promo work and so i feel like that veneer comes up more than i would hope it would and so there's just moments where it just sounds like he's cutting a promo and so that kind of gets me a little bit also i just and it's a problem I had with the Suicide Squad as well, was just not all the humor lands for me. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's just a matter of taste. Um, yeah. But, um, but overall, no, I, I was very happy with the series. Um, I mean, the ensemble was great. Uh, and like I said, the music choices and all the fight scenes were just wonderful. Um, yeah. And especially as it went on, like, you really, really get to appreciate where this character was at the end of the suicide squad and where he ends up as still kind of a douche, but a much more endearing douche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I was thoroughly pleased with it and I'm excited to see what they do with season two. Maybe we'll get a different, uh, different dance number for the intro. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Going back to, to the wrestling of it all. um, It is hard to take that, that Superman sheen off of John Cena. Like yeah. he was for so long. See that it's different for me though. Cause from the stuff that I've seen, like when I've been watching him on wrestling and stuff like that, I just kind of take that as like, that's his out of character personality. Like, and I know that's absolutely not the case. Right. But I just, I assume that he is just a doofus all the time. Like he has that like, like Alan Tudyk on screen. And that's just how he is all the time that's how cena is all the time and so i just kind of roll with it and like yeah he's you know typecast as a doofus i mean yes yes i know it, it is why his it's why the comedy that he does in hollywood works um if you've ever seen sisters or um he or... is actually one of the few actors that i can put up with the the cringe humor. Oh, okay. Somebody saying something so, you know, oh, or yeah. doing something so horribly embarrassing that you can't, you know, you 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 have have to laugh at it because pretty much his entire performance in <clears throat> cock blockers. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I will admit, if John Cena's in a movie, I'm probably going to see it. Right. Just because it, it, I am. First of all, I am fascinated with the transition from wrestler to you to, know what I do with assholes. I lick them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I, but I'm fascinated with that transition. Um, you know, 
going as far back as like Rowdy Roddy Piper, mm-hmm. like in They Live, like that's pretty much Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, uh, in, in a movie and in early stuff with The Rock, same thing. Um, yeah. And obviously now we're at the point where a lot of these, like Dave Batista is doing some fantastic work. Yeah. yeah. That they're, is they're developing range. Right. That is yeah. so far away from his, his wrestling persona. I don't know necessarily other than for the comedic uh, like tinge to it that Cena has gotten that far. I think the furthest that he's gotten is the new Fast and Furious movie. But even then, he was just serious Cena the entire time. Yeah, you, you get some of that that promo thing on that too. Yeah. It's just, I would, I, I would really love to see him get a chance to actually like s- stretch himself as an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I mean, you, I mean, you get guys who are, I think an apt comparison is like Arnold Schwarzenegger um, who, you know, was doing the same kind of thing. And then, you know, as he got older and, you know, he had some, had some moments where he really got to like actually show some range. It was like, Oh, he can do this. Right. Um, and yeah, I, I, Cena gets some moments of that, especially towards the latter part of the the season. And I, I'm hoping they can take that farther in season two. I think they actually, uh, even early in the series, because there's the the where he goes home and he's crying. Oh yeah, in bed, like punching himself. I mean, like that was. Yeah. It wasn't crying. Those were face exercises. Right. I mean, yeah. you go immediately into the joke, right? Sure. Yeah. But for that moment, there was some really good serious acting like yeah. you know of this person that yes i will i will definitely agree with that always on the edge of having a complete and utter fucking mental breakdown because as you find out his childhood was shitty and then it just the punches just kept coming the so hits Jen, just keep coming huh? yes what the hits keep, they just they, keep coming and they don't stop coming yeah so i mean the the carryover you get from the comic book into the the tv series seems to be fragile mental state crazy nazi father except nazi dad's alive until the end where he does get ghost nazi dad right which i'm wondering if that's going to be a thing in season two ghost nazi dad i'm I'm assuming that's what the whole setup if ghost nazi dad flies a plane (laughs) (laughs) well his suit flew oh that's true that's right he had a jetpack which now going back and having seen that the whole how can i fight a mothra if i don't have a jetpack is a lot funnier right <laughs> it is a lot funnier especially when you feel like the nah, human torpedo <laughs> and he doesn't even that that's where you get the it's still hilarious but like he's still a douchebag because he wasn't even wearing the human torpedo helmet when it happened right yeah uh, having that's the one thing that i'm just kind of noticing as we're talking about is having read the comic there were a lot of, James Gunn knew this character, like had done his research. Oh yeah. So there are a lot of like subtle nods to this character. He absolutely like, read this comic and went, this character is a douchebag. Yeah. And I'm going to turn it into a modern take on this character. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. Right. The one criticism I had was and it's, it's, I think it's what you're saying, uh, David, when you say that there's some humor that hits and some that doesn't. Yeah. Is I'm not sure if Peacemaker is supposed to be an idiot or he's supposed to just be really gullible. Like, because he'll he'll know certain things Mm -hmm. and then he'll come up with like the butt baby thing believes. And, you know, uh, his, you know, he believes everything he hears on Facebook. And I mean... I get it. That's the modern kind of haha. I get it because there are people like that. Well, and they literally go after like your, your weird. What did, what, did, what did she say? Your weird post libertarian ideals or yes. something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I mean, they flat out take shots at. Yes. Um, and also the pointing out, you know, no, this really is a deep state thing. <laughs> 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 there are people deep in the government that. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Jen, this this kind of uh, this show surprised you when we first watched it. It did. I was not a fan of the character in the Suicide Squad. Um, you know, just big, dumb, stupid, shiny helmet. Just terrible. The character was terrible. 
character mm-hmm. is terrible. It's a <laughs> terrible character. Um, and I really had, I was just, you know, after seeing the Suicide Squad, the Suicide the Squad, Suicide Squad. Squad um, uh, you know, I was like, oh, why did they let him live? And then when when the series when you, you know I learned that the series was happening, I'm like, oh great, what's this gonna be? Right. You know how terrible. Like in my head, I probably had something closer to what the comic is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, the uh, the one thing it's this, and I'm trying to think of what the other show that we've watched recently um, that like t- like makes me go wait what um when they talk about other characters within the universe because of course they would because they sure. exist in the universe but i think gun did such a great job with peacemaker to make it seem real like this is like a story that could be happening and these dudes are just idiots dressed in stupid costumes right You know, not that Batman is really real, you know, (laughs) and then when something like that happens, when somebody talks about one of those famous Mm. characters, it always, I always have like a very jarring moment. I do. I did really, really enjoy the, the addition of, like you were saying, the addition of the world, but in a very specific way to this character, because he knows like every conspiracy theory on the sexual fetishes of every other superhero. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and at the same time, he knows who Batmite is, which, like, that's a deep cut. That's a real deep cut. That's like that's like somebody in the Marvel, uh, in the MCU, pulling out, oh, yeah, Spider-Ham, that time that... Right. <laughs> uh, but that's that's also my where I broke a little bit, because he knows about Batmite. And he knows what a homunculus is, <laughs> but at the same Brady's time, still talking about butt babies. Yeah, but at the same time, he's still like, yeah, like I forgot women had fingers to have sex with. Yeah, uh, you know, just some weird. It's like les- lesbians have pretty much cornered the market on fingering, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which you know, funny. It's it's a funny line, yeah. but was it worth what? Now my my view on that character at the expense of that joke. You know, um, yeah, it, it, and again, it. I don't know if that's the example of the humor that you were talking about, David, but that was definitely something that yeah, I, I still mean, saw the humor in it, but I was like, eh, really? I can see why some people would find it funny, but for me, the, there's just, it's moments like that where, yeah, it just, it's, it's either seems incredibly juvenile or it's just relying on scatological humor that right. like sometimes works, but in this context just wasn't landing for me and you know not every joke is gonna work not not for everybody yeah i mean the only one of those that really landed for me is the superman's into scat play what's kind of funny well (laughs) i think that that's kind of used to show um that you know he's he is this huge hulking man and yet has the brain of a 13 year old you know an, an uneducated 13 year old because he believes all of these weird things and he has this sense of humor or not even a sense of humor. It's like he says things that are really offensive, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it, it like comes from this naivete that makes it, that couches it in a completely different way, which is how you see his interaction with each part of the, the team, you know, and how at first he's very off-putting to all of them. And then they start to realize that He's almost like parroting a lot of these views and they're not his. Yeah. Well, it, just the weird scattershot everything with the character. He is just such an eclectic mix of everything. Yeah. Because you can get to the point, like, I wrote this down too. I took notes. I was like, you get to episode six and he sits down at a fucking piano and he starts playing and you're just like, what? How was and I'm like uh-huh. and I remember actually that. John Cena is actually playing some of that. Mm-hmm. Like I, they had scenes where you could see both his face and his hands, and I'm like and I'm sitting there and I'm like you is that yes you sat down on a piano they're having a very musical moving moment fucking Motley Crue on the piano <laughs> <laughs> like that's what you just did you did this to me why oh why James Gunn did you do this to me? <laughs> Well, first off, because he's James fucking God. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Because you think about the, like, 
once somebody, I, I have this personal opinion having, you know, I haven't had much piano, but taking a couple of years of piano, like, that's something that requires some study, and you're gonna, like, it takes a certain mindset to sit down and actually play any instrument, but let alone, like, the piano. Like, how do you get that and then get the rest of what this this fool is doing? Well, and I, I think it, with moments like that, I think it sort of speaks to this dichotomy that the character has going on within himself because i'm sure that mm -hmm. like if there's something like that i that you know i don't know if that was something he would have learned with his father's knowledge because he has this person that his father expects him to be which also i'm sure leads to this weird sheltered conspiracy theory persona that he ends up presenting but then you know he has this tender sensitive side that i'm sure he's just had to shove way way down yeah. And, you know, it takes a lot to just go, all right, well, fuck it. We're just going to play the piano for a minute. And I really hope that season two gets into how he broke with his father's view. Because I, yeah. at no point is that really explained. No, I mean, you start getting flashbacks about four episodes in. Right, about him and, and his brother. But yeah, not him and his about... brother, but that's like... Actually, episode four is kind of the line in this series. It's like, as soon as episode four hits, everything just goes crazy yes Do yes the whole thing. because that yeah fifth episode is when you get butterfly controlling a gorilla and which was amazing yes. yeah and then you get like the chainsaw scene and you and, get yeah and just you get yeah I, i've got a grenade on a on a on a missile, tank shell on a yes. tank shell whatever it was yeah right um well i wonder if he was able to kind of explore other like what he really thought when he was in prison and i wonder if that's going to come up Oh, yeah. But it, they, they even state he was only in prison for four years. Yeah, it wasn't long. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, definitely I'm hoping that we get more into it because uh, <laughs> prison is also not the most conductive environment to unlearn racism. Uh, bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well but I mean, this it's going to put special you in contact prison. with everybody, so... You're yeah. either going to, it's either going to get worse or it's going to get better. There's really nothing in between. But as we saw, like... Amanda Waller was involved. We do have to... Well, we, Amanda yeah, Waller yeah. was involved yeah. eventually. But what do you yes. mean eventually? She was, she took them over, didn't she? Well, she pulled them into the Suicide Squad, but that was supposed, since this t takes place right after that assignment, she only, she spent, what, three and a half years in prison then in Belle Reve before uh you know being being pulled out for for task force x so but the other part of that is even if he was in prison we've seen his dad's influence in prison but he yeah. was not in normal prison no, remember there was reef. even a, yeah. a line that detective song said why is he still here well, yeah why isn't he in arkham in yeah bell reef bell reef no he said well i thought you think he said one of the two didn't he why yeah. isn't he in Arkham or Bell Reeve? You're right. Arkham, yeah. Arkham is she, for the... Detective Song was the woman. Was she the one that mm -hmm. said it? Okay, mm -hmm. I couldn't remember which one said it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because Arkham is for the criminally insane, mm -hmm. and Bell Reeve is just a prison. Yeah. But it's a or special Black prison. Or Blackgate, depending on exactly where in the continuity of DC you are. What but is that, the difference between Blackgate and Bell Reeve? David, do you know? Uh, they're two different prisons. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I think location might be the other thing too. Oh, one in Gotham and one in like Metropolis area. Uh, Blackgate Penitentiary is a fictional prison depicted in the DC universe, traditionally located on a small island island in the Gotham oh. Bay. Oh, in the Bay, which is directly across from Metropolis, if Snyder. Uh, <laughs> the Long Halloween suggests that it was preceded by Gotham State Penitentiary, which appeared often in pre-Crisis comics. And then yeah. Bell Rev is typically depicted as being out in the swamp. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Huh. Oh, Bell Rev, Bell Rev is oh, come here, you trying to get to the Bell Rev is uh for metahumans. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I thought that Bell Rev was specifically for not just the regular population. It was originally the site of the former Dubois plantation. Prison facility uh, used to contain metahumans, used as the base of operations for Task Force X and the Suicide Squad, located in Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana, near St. Roach, or Rock, R-O-C-H, I'm not sure. Bell Rev has been the epicenter of several sinister attacks, so saith the wiki. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. 
It depends on how super powered you are. That's where you go. Okay, nice. That was also another one of those moments that took me back to, oh yeah, wait, this is part of the whole bigger mm-hmm. DC mm-hmm. universe. Yeah. As soon as she was like, so it was that same scene where it's like, why isn't he in, you know, this place or Arkham or, and I was just like, oh yeah, Arkham. And of course there's the last episode where they're, did you call the Justice League? <laughs> I am glad to see projects like this though, that, um, fish fucker, fish fucker. Um, Episodes like this that are um, allowing questions to be asked on screen that absolutely would be asked, you know, um, like like the whole like conversation with the, Sturgeon. No, the whole conversation <laughs> with uh, with the neighbor about mm. what, why don't you have a, a, a cadre of super, yeah. super villains? He's like, because I fucking killed them. How many people is Batman responsible for? Because he keeps putting the Joker in prison, right? And he keeps breaking out, right? Which, you know, is, is one of the great questions. So asks also Damian Wayne. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I do hope to see more projects like this. Uh, you know, I, I will say that it gave me, uh, it's more comedic, but second season on of Titans is very similar to this. Um, yes, I get it. You're not going to watch it. It's fine. I'm just going to yeah. bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might come on my TV at some point in time when there's nothing else to watch and I just want background noise while I'm painting cars for gaslight. Okay. It's, yeah, it's really stoic and trying to be serious in the first season and then they get it rid is, of that. It is very much, we have to hit every trope for a kid's show that we can hit within the first season. It's not a kid's show. I'm just saying. Not Titans. Not to, you know, oh, no, no, sorry. I was thinking of Young Justice, my bad. Right. No, Titans. Oh, I still no, need yeah, to no, catch no, up. No, I'm definitely not going to watch Titans. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Young Justice. Yeah, no, no. Um, is it on the CW? No, it's on HBO. Man. Then she might watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Titans was originally on DC Universe, and then right. when everything migrated over to HBO Max, it went along too. Yeah, Titans is the one that has the Bruce Wayne that you like, that you walk through the room. and. Oh, okay. Yeah. We haven't talked about Vigilante. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or uh, Kung Fu Master. Yeah, Judo, Judo Master. Master. Judo Master. Cobra Vigilante Kai. makes Peacemaker <laughs> look like Stephen Hawking. Yes. I, yeah. Yes. I think it, and really it's the only, having Vigilante there is really the only reason sometimes you can put up with just how ridiculous Peacemaker is getting. Because yeah. Vigilante walks out and is just like, extra stupid on top of it right and you're just like oh oh okay so i've got somebody here somebody else here that i can really hate <laughs> <laughs> but that was the thing i mean i felt like by the end of the first season everyone that you thought you hated at the beginning including peacemaker you're like i kind of like these characters now you know i think i think they did a really they great their, job of character their development street mo- moment the yeah. what? their 11th street moment James Gunn does well with a group of misfits. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. And I will say the the thing about Vigilante is from the time he showed up on screen, it took me like three episodes to separate him from kick ass in my head. <laughs> because <laughs> not just like his costume kind of is reminiscent of the whole kick ass thing with the green and the actor like is, you know, black haired, scrawny white kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Kind of, what, what was he? Cormac McGladden in uh, Harry Potter. No idea. Anyway, that but that that same build, that same and you know the realism of Kickass, like especially after he loses half of his toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that was another thing that I liked. I mean, and cemented that team as misfits. It's like how how are these people black ops? I mean, come on. The thing that the thing that really got it for me was so the, in the Judo Master rematch. Yes. Right. Yeah. The rematch in the parking lot. It's shot. Okay, he's getting his ass kicked. He gets shot. They he's still alive. They bring him back in, lay him back down on the on the couch, and wrap a bandage over his armor. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> through the like o- over the bullet wound, put some extra padding over the bullet wound, wrap the bandage all the way around his rib cage. I'm just like, I, you guys got to be kidding me! <laughs> Nobody in here thought maybe we should, if we actually want to save him. We should... I thought they pulled it down. No, it was literally, I literally just wrapped right over his green suit, right, 
And I was just like, are you guys really? Yep, they're just going to run with this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Suspension of disbelief is a fun right. one. Yes. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, Autobio and Economos, I, I totally can relate to how they felt in those situations. They're like, fuck. What, yeah. How, I, yeah. He's getting away. What I don't do know. I do? yeah. crashed the fucking van yeah. into him. Well, I mean, in any situation that they're in in the first few episodes, I mean, I think they behave like any normal person would put in that situation because that's not the kind of situation they're used to being in. Right. You smack somebody on the head with a pipe, and when they're still moving, I'll do it again. Oh, are they still moving? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Are they still moving? No. I won. Look at me, I'm badass! Well, and I was just, I was really happy to see that we got at least a little bit more with Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because that, that is a perfect piece of casting. Yeah. Yes. I, I love her as Amanda Waller. So just even getting a, even getting just, you know, 20 more minutes or whatever it was across, you know, this season with her is like, yay. I believe this was a conversation that we had maybe in our, uh, our conversation Ever about justice prey, league, so? maybe even birds of prey, Might have been a bird but of prey. no, no one has ever or been, I would imagine, been allowed to, but of all the characters that have had missteps and miscastings and everything else, they do not fuck up Amanda Waller. Nope. I've never seen a bad Amanda Waller, like, and I do like this one because they're even, through her daughter, humanizing her. Yeah. You know, showing that she does have a family and she does actually have, you know, feelings. Um, and especially to see Adebayo, like, constantly around people dissing on her mom and not able to just right. tell them tell them stop off. talking yeah. about my mom uh is pretty amazing because she has some of the same thoughts but obviously she has a mother-daughter relationship that softens a well lot and i think that. you can also pick out that she she might not realize all of these terrible things that her mom has done and be like oh oh yeah Oh, well, but I, yeah, and I think that they use that as a foil against Peacemaker and his relationship with his father and how terrible his father is. Right. And so, you know, it's like the perception, you know, degrees of badness, degrees of horrible, you know, kind of thing. And, um, you know, it, it also puts the, the characters of Adebayo and Peacemaker, you know, gives them something else that in common. Yeah makes them relatable to each other right. and to the rest of the audience. Cause I mean, talk, want to talk about having a, you know, a bad parent or two, <laughs> like, yeah. I understand. And, and Peacemaker and Adebayo might just have the worst parents. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> on, on very opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Plus Robert Patrick was just, Oh, that just, yeah. he's great. Yeah. He is great. I, well, I do hope he gets to be a specter in, in season two because <laughs> yes him just being a dick to peacemaker would be delightful well what did amuse me uh checking my research on the d before this episode is they've been in like three different projects together him and john cena um really in uh in it wasn't the marine no it was the marine uh robert patrick was the bad guy in the marine which was john cena's oh, first God, ever movie a long time ago yeah yeah um and then they were in some other film. I don't have it up right now, but yeah. It's so they've your like D isn't up. My D is not up right okay. now. Just checking. Um, but yeah, they they have like a long relationship of of projects that they've worked on together, which I I find amusing because John Cena's film filmography is not that long. Yeah. Robert Patrick's, however, <laughs> man was the goddamn Terminator, right? Two thousand, baby. That's right. T one thousand. T one thousand. Sorry. My bad. I'm old. You should be ashamed, sure. Bear. I should be ashamed. So ashamed. My D is down now, too. Dishonor on you? Dishonor <laughs> on your cow? Oh, the one thing I wanted to bring up just as an aside. The upside down flag uh, means uh, uh, danger. Like, you're only supposed to fly the flag upside down as a signal for extreme danger. Yeah, extreme distress, yeah. Yep. yep. So, yeah, basically. I don't remember that. His dad's house has... The flag float oh, outside the American oh, no, flag. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. Down. I do remember that. And Jossie's like, I don't know, it's a deep state thing, which it <laughs> is. It was co opted. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, yeah. it took me a second to re remember that. Yeah, but just like. And then if you, you know, if you want to get into like the other little bits and just like if you watch the, the after, you know, in the credits scenes, 
uh, they're talking, going through all the different helmets. This one gives you scabies. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> why would I want scabies? Why would I want scabies? <laughs> Everyone should have scabies once in their life. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> having, uh, having had to deal with like nursing homes and stuff like that, where they get a scabies outbreak, you don't ever, yeah, ever want to have to deal with scabies if you don't have to. Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe the helmet is supposed to be a sabotage point for like if somebody steals it. Like, oh, stole true. the helmet. Oh, I got it to work. Oh, God, scabies. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a very different end of episode if uh, Adebayo had put on the scabies helmet so the x-ray helmet. <laughs> 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 this the trajectory of the entire show. Right. Was a little, little differently. Yep, sudden left turn. Yep. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us once again. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. We'll... we'll Find something else and bring you on back again. Notice what he didn't ask this time. Don't around. threaten was, me with a good time. Right? Oh, yeah. None of us are going to read anything. <laughs> I was just like, no. I was like right? notice yeah. what he didn't ask. Because yeah. if anybody was going to read further. <laughs> I know that, I think I have it, but I haven't had a chance to read it. I know they did a Peacemaker Black Label book, um, which I think I have the single issues of, but it's on my ever-growing pile of things to read at some point. Interesting. I mean, my only concern for people is that if you're one of those people who has brain weasels in your head that tell you, like, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're a bad person, this is not the comic to read. Mm-mm. Like, yeah. it's, that's all, that's, like, every page. Yeah. There is, there's a guy in the background telling Peacemaker he's not good enough. Ooh. There's a full-on really Nazi. Right? Telling yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Please tune in in two weeks when we will be doing The Punisher. Uh, And we'll have Wheeze. Thomas Jane all the way. Well, we'll see if Bear and I will brave Dolph Lundgren. We might do that tonight. You never know. Yeah, a little Dolph Lundgren tonight. There we go. (laughs) I have plans. (laughs) (laughs) Until then, take it away, Vandello. Come with me, I'll tell a story that you might have heard before. Graphically novel, but the same old trouble. Villains always knocking at the door. Pretty pictures on the page, but nothing ever stays the same. Ever as it